Hey y'all! The following program is intended for mature adult audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. You have been warned. Thank you! Hello friends and welcome back to another Flavored Enemy Legacy. Um, today we have a group of fighters that are going to venture forth through a portal to a land of the unknown to hunt down a vicious mercenary by the name of Reginald. He is hunting down mythical creatures and selling their body parts on the black market. Let's see what we can do about this, shall we? As we open up, we see five, we see our five party members standing before a glowing portal. The portal is swirling colors with glitter and it's pink and it's blue and there's some yellow and the colors all swirl together they keep on moving never staying calm you can smell a, a gentle breeze blowing through the portal but you can't see anything through it um, the portal's just kind of in the middle of a field in a meadow and uh, our party is standing with the sheriff of a nearby town and Sheriff Levi turns to the group. He's got a thick handlebar mustache and a very impressive 10 gallon cowboy hat. He's wearing leather chaps with tassels and a leather vest also with tassels, with no shirt underneath. He turns to our group and he says, All right, folks, this here is the portal. You should know before you go through that no one else I've sent through has come back. Are you sure you want to go in? And he looks at On Weir first. Yes, this seems like a good, good job for On Weir. All right. And, uh, and how about you? And he asks Ember. Yeah, I can't, uh, can't see why it would be a bad thing. I mean, sure, people maybe haven't come back, but we look like we got a pretty good crew here, and, you know, I, 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 I'm confident in my own abilities, and these guys look like they're pretty tough, although I haven't really gotten a chance to talk to them too much. Um, and then, uh, uh Ember sort of just trails off. All right. Well... This is a bit of a mixed crew. How about you? You sure you want to work with them? And he stares at Sportle. Little confused. But also very serious. Well, I'll say. This looks like a portal fit for Sportle the Tortle. And I'm going to go on through. And we're going to do what needs to be done. Because it needs to get done. All right, all right. Well... And, and you two, you two, and he looks at Uridale and Roxy, just kind of looking between them. How do you feel? You might not come back. I mean, that part I'm not so sure on, but I hear we're going to help somebody and we're going to do some fighting. So absolutely, just, I'm going to need y'all to not get in my way or I might accidentally cut you down. Uridel holds up the heft the haft of her whip which has a bit of fur attached to it from a displacer beast that shared the cell next to her back when she was in uh, was in a gladiator ring and um, just says the fine creatures of this land do not deserve to have their bodies torn apart and sold for profit they will feel the tips of my whip all right well here's the portal I'll stand here for, oh, I don't know, a few hours, see if you come out. Whenever you're ready, you can just jump on through. So, what do you guys do? Well, I'm not one for jumping much now at my age, but I'll meander on through. I'll go through at a full gallop. Not time like the present. And Ember will sort of shuffle on through. 
we uh, will continue through as well. Well, as long as it doesn't mess up my hair once it come out the other side, I'll go ahead and go through. All right, so you all jump through the portal, and it feels as though all you did was walk through a doorway. Um, there's no... Um, there's no, like, swirling mass of colors as you go through. It's kind of just, like, sticking your head through a window, and suddenly you're on the other side. Uh, what you see is a small thicket of very small trees, or of very strange trees, sorry, and very strange bushes. The rocks are all looking a little odd. The air smells very, very sweet. The, the temperature is very pleasant, and there's a gentle breeze. Um, as you take in everything around you, um, Sportle, you were the first one to go through, and as you step out, you see that the trees are made of cotton candy, and the bark is all made of chocolate. Can you describe yourself and what you do upon stepping through the portal? So, Sporo the Turtle is a 417-year-old Circle of Spores Druid turtle race. Um, he carries with him uh, a shield, a cloak, and a little club, not a staff. Um, he used to have a turtle shell, but... Uh, when he turned 362, uh, it rotted away, unfortunately, due to a disease. But the good news is, is that a giant mushroom grew to take his place. Um, when he goes through the portal, he is kind of distracted at the change of scenery, the quick change of color. But he immediately takes up a defensive stance and raises a shield in case anything tries to attack him or his new allies as they enter this new realm. All right, Hiradel, you were galloping, so you're the next one through. As you come through, you notice that the all the stones on the ground are not actually rocks, but they're made of rock candy. Um, could you please describe yourself and what you do next? Yeah, uh, so Uridel is a centaur. She is um, six foot five at the from, you know, floor to the top of her head. Her equine body is a sort of um, a rose gray uh, coat with a loose tail. Um, she has she's very tanned on her on her torso with um, narrow blue gray eyes. Um, beneath a helm, she has brunette hair that falls just below her shoulders. Um, the helmet is uh, has two large prong uh, orchid kind of side horns with a broken horn in the center. Um, her battle regalia is red with gold trimmed that goes on, um, uh, and she's wearing a very light mithril plate armor, carrying a decorative shield, and... Um, her primary weapon at her side is a is a whip. And what do you do upon stumbling in through the portal? Or running, sorry, through the portal. I will um, slow to a trot, look around quite curiously at the rock, candy rocks, and sort of like give one a, give one a, a, a firm hoof to see if it breaks, just to confirm that it is, in fact, what I think it is. Yeah, it breaks. Curious. We've seemed to find ourselves in a land of whimsy. How delightful. Uh, Ember, you meander through the portal next, and you trample on a bunch of flowers, and you notice that, as you do, white dust kind of puffs up from each of the flowers and coats, uh, coat starts coating your, your legs and your clothing. Um, it smells very sweet, but you're not sure what it is. Could you please describe yourself and what you do next? Sure. Um, Ember uh, walks on confidently uh, through the portal. Uh, Ember is, by any other measure, a, a normal-looking or shaped halfling. However, he is 
His skin is rough and black with the the texture and coloration of charcoal, and just underneath it appears to be be um, burning slightly. Uh, his hair, while not generating any heat, appears to be like a low burning flame close to the top of his head, and his, as his eyes also glow with this uh, the yellow light of fire. Um, his clothing is one of someone you may expect to find in the woods. He's got a simple green tunic with a red leather belt wrapped around um, and some simple burlap pants uh, and uh, not fancy crafted leather shoes tied together with some uh, some twine. Uh, the more more noticeable aspect that he's carrying, though, is a a katana-like blade that is almost exactly as long as he is tall, uh, and the edge glows with a the the red um, with the red heat as if it was pulled straight out of the forge. Um, so Ember Ember will walk through and and uh, looking down at uh, at the powder along his pants, he say, "Oh well, that was really no sweat. Um, this really shouldn't be much of a challenge, guys. Uh, this doesn't look like it." could be that dangerous at all i i would assume i mean candy this and um he'll reach down and scoop up what the power the powder off of his let off his pants just like run a finger through it and touch it to his tongue yeah and it's just it straight like? up sugar oh wow that's that's really sweet well let's uh get ready to render this task complete you make a habit of eating unidentified powders that you come across. Uh, it can be quite informative most of the time. Well, I mean, it, um, you know, I'm pretty familiar with a lot of, um, of flora. that I've never seen any like this before, so I'd like to get a a catalog of all of its all of its properties, including I'm, taste. I'm not sure that that particular species technically <laughs> qualifies as flora. Yeah, it, it, I know it looks like flour, but it's actually sugar. It, it's an easy mistake to make. At least it wasn't salt. That would have been quite upsetting. Mm. And uh, Onweir, you are the next through the portal. And as you step through through the through the little thicket of trees, through um, through the cotton candy leaves and the the sugar floating through the air you can see kind of like glowing light about uh 40 feet just beyond the trees can you please describe yourself and what you do next yes so Anweer is about five foot four lizard folk dark green scales and red eye makeup above her eyes she wears black leather armor and carries with her a cast iron skillet for fireside meals. And as she looks around, Anwia says, Well, I see a lot of garnishing, but where's the meat? And Roxy, you are the last one through the portal. As you step through... You happen to notice that the the birds in the sky don't so much have feathers on them as they do um, like that soft minky fabric. Like none of the animals that you can see are made of what animals should be made of. Can you please describe yourself and what you do next? Uh, yeah, so my name is Roxy, and I am a high elf. Um, I'm a bard because I just absolutely love music. Uh, this is my favorite loot that I'm carrying right now. Um, I'm also a fighter, though, because, you know, I heard it was fun. Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, I have a longsword on my back and a dagger on my thigh because where else is it going to go? Um, I am wearing the traditional uh, elvish leathers, 
but I absolutely insisted on the fact that they be dyed pink. Now, if you dare tell me that it looks horrible, I will put my blade in your neck, just to be clear. And as far as the birds and the other animals go, they're rather strange looking. And honestly, I don't know how they're even alive at this point. Awesome. So now that you're all through the portal, what do you do next? Um, so, uh, does, does anybody uh, have any any sight on any clues or any tracks? Any any ideas? Yes, I would like to investigate for tracks. Sure, you can make an investigation check. I will not find anything because that is a natural one. Huh? <laughs> In fact, you find more candy. And more trees made of chocolate. Well, that's a very nice candy you got there. Maybe I could give it a try. In his, in, you see Sportle's eyes go wide for a second. I've seen some stuff, man. Yes, we seem to be somewhere weird. No, that's a six. Uh, you also find more rock candy. Can I do perception or survival? I was, I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna ask about that. I've actually got a pretty decent survival. Um, yeah, you can give me a survival check. All right, we'll take that up. There you go. Yeah. All right. So, um, the first thing that you both see upon looking at the ground. Um, are several rotten teeth. Um, they all seem to be coated in plaque. Uh, they're, the roots are kind of molding. They're not great to look at. And you also see a ton of footprints in the sugar pollen that is coming up from all the flowers. Um... You can see them heading straight north out of the thicket of trees. What do you do? Well, I point that out to my allies and I tell them, Well, I don't recommend eating anything here. Because gingivitis is really bad. And it looks like it acts incredibly quickly in this realm. Ember runs his tongue over his teeth a couple extra times. Uh, you are fine so far. All right, well, um, let's, uh, I guess we can uh, just start hoofing it and get all, uh, get on our way. Uradel will uh, glare at Ember when he says hoofing it and just say, I haven't heard that one before. Uh, Ember's already walking, um, just didn't intend, didn't mean it, didn't mean anything by it, and is already oblivious and on his way. Like, oh my god, I think that was a little racist. Is that a thing? Can you be racist against centaurs? I think technically it's specious, but the it, it the va it's valid wording, I think, but I'm not sure it's Technically, linguistically, a lexicographically. Hey, no. we're, we're, we're all edible here, after all. Quite oh, the reminder no, I there. I am not edible. I beg to differ. The last person that tried to te treat me as lesser than ended up trampled on. Oh, so wh where are we going? Who knows the way? He, the, the, the short one has already wandered off. Best keep pace. As you make your way north, um, on where... Can you make me, real quick, can you make me a perception check? Absolutely, on where is on it. Oh, I have advantage on perception checks. I forget. As do I. I'll that would that be up. a 19. All right. So you happen to notice that the uh, those glowing lights that you saw when you first stepped through the portal, um, they appear to be moving around much like the portal, um, but 
rather than swirling together, they're they're more of a wavy line, um, and they're glowing. They're getting brighter and brighter as you um, cross through this thicket of trees. They are directly to your north. And we have seized these things. So I look to my allies. Anweer makes note. There are floating lights about us, and they are moving. Anweer is to investigate. I can um, scout ahead, and uh, I will summon my echo. And so a a, a shadowy copy of Uridel um, appears in front of her, and... Yurida will stop um, as I transfer my consciousness, um, my to my avatar, so that I can see and hear through my echo instead of my own body, and then I will um, move my echo ahead to scout forward. Um, we would like to make investigation check on these lights. Go for it. That is an eighteen beauty so on where as you're as you peek through the the last couple of trees in this little thicket uh you notice that these lights are not just lights they're legitimate dancing rainbows um happy not quite music but sounds are emanating from them but they don't have any discernible mouths or eyes or limbs how, just, la- how large are they? Um, they are they are huge. Um, this doesn't say how tall they are. This just says they're huge. Um, they kind of hover above the ground, and um, they are currently dancing with what looks to be candy ants with cotton candy leaves and chocolate bark similar to the trees you've just walked through. Um, But these ones have have faces and are moving their various tree limbs uh, to dance with these with these uh, living rainbows. What do you do next? So Yurida will send out the echo into the sort of clearing I guess yes. um, and try to just sort of get an observation of what may be on the other side of the dancing rainbows and co- cotton candy trees so I'll sneak up there and An- we would like to take a bite out of this rainbow the natural 20 for stealth for the echo well done so um, is anyone going to stop Onweir from attacking this rainbow? I just want a bite. Just a taste. I <laughs> taste the rainbow. No. I want to um, see how this plays out, because honestly, it's going to be entertaining one way yeah, or the other. I'm not sure Ember even notices. You know, Anweer is very much her own person, and if she wants to mess with rainbows and stuff, she totally can. However, if things get too out of control, I will gladly step in. Anweer would love to take bite of rainbow. Okay. If that's what's happening, then Anweer... Um... Okay, hold on. Um, so real quick... Yuridale, your as your um, kind of phantom you steps out of a clearing, you see that um, this clearing is just massive. There is a cotton candy forest about a hundred feet from where you're standing. Off to the west is a mountain range of some kind, and um, off to the east, the you can see there's a path that uh, um, that leads kind of around the cotton candy forest. Um, Is it by chance a 
gumdrop path. Uh, in fact, it is gumdrops and more rock candy. Yes. Oh. Um, and now, Onweir, as you take a bite out of this rainbow, I'm going to need everybody to roll for initiative. Yeah. I get Do advantage I... on initiative. Oh my Do God, I... Hooray. Do I get my bite attack against it first? Yeah, I'll give it to you. All right. That is an eight for the bite. All right. Initiative is 16. Uridel is a 17 on initiative. Ember uh, rolled a natural 20 for a 25. Sportle got a 10. And I totally got a nine, but that's okay. I don't mind going last. You can all go first. Beautiful. Um, I'm just going to roll for the rainbows and the trees. Um, so there are, just so you are all aware, you can see that there are three living rainbows and three cotton candy trees. Um, it looks like Ember is going to go first. All right. Um, uh, have any of the trees or the rainbows made any sort of um, action or uh, made any sort of, uh, 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 I guess, display that they're being hostile towards us? Uh, the rainbow that uh, Onwear took a bite out of is suddenly making doom music. Not music, oh. like random doom sounds rather than the happy-go-lucky sounds that it was making previously. Oh, that doesn't sound good. Um, and the trees uh, have turned on, turned into face on where and uh, look, look a little bit angrier than they had been when they were just dancing before. Oh, they look angrier, huh? Well, um, I'm going to... Uh, Step in front, in, in between, hopefully, between Onweir and the trees and other uh, potentially hostile things. They haven't attacked yet, so I don't want to strike first. And I will um, strike a... Uh, I will hold my action to attack. Um, and then also uh, spend a key point to take the dodge action. All right. Hoping to just sort of create a uh, a barrier. Um, the there is an there is a cotton candy tree directly to uh, ten feet to your left. There is a uh, there is a rainbow directly in front of you, like within melee range. Um. The one directly in front of you does not seem to understand what you're trying to do and is also making doom noises. Oh, um, okay. Is well, that the end of your turn? Oh, yes. Sorry. Yes, that is uh, my action to dodge. Or, yes, action to hold my action, bonus action to dodge. Um, with uh, what's that ability called for monks? Um, patient defense. And that'll be it. Uh, all right. Um, so next up is Tree C, is how I have named them. Um, and Tree C is going to step up to Onweir and take a swing. Um, does 14 hit? Our team does not hit on we're. Excellent. So the tree stumbles, catches itself, um, and you can hear the doom sounds getting louder as all yes, of uh, the unicorn, as all of the rainbows start chiming in with their doom noises. Is the um is the tree within Ember's reach after it uh, attacked on we're? Yes. I would like to make an attack with my flame tongue longsword. All right. Yeah, all right. Uh, 
Aha! It's a natural one! That does not hit. And in fact, um, you fall, or you, not fall, you kind of trip forward as you, as you swing, and it spins you about so your back is to the, to the rainbow. Uh-oh. Um, next we have Rainbow C. And Rainbow C is going to um, make a multi-attack at both Onweir and Uradale. You must make a DC 12 dexterity saving throw. Is this against actual Uradale or against the echo of a Uradale? Did I say Uradale? I meant Ember. Oh, okay. My mistake. Um... Uh, since I took the dodge action, it attacks with disadvantage. Oh. Um, so you need to make a DC 12 dex saving throw. Does that mean you have advantage on that? I think so with the dodge action, but it's been a while since I used it. Uh, let it, me look. It, not typically. Oh, okay. Well, never mind okay. that. All right. Uh, no, uh, dex save then. Good thing I'm good at those. All right. That'll be 20. Excellent. You save. And, uh, Onweir. DC 12. It's 16 for Onweir. Excellent. Um, so you both save, and the rainbow shoots jets of light that just kind of fly behind you and slam into the other non-sentient trees. Chocolate and cotton candy go flying. Uh, next up, we have uh, Uradale. All right, so how far are these creatures from my Echo, and how far are they from me? So they are, the closest ones to your Echo are 10 feet, and the closest ones from you are 30 feet. Awesome. Nope, 25. Uh, oh, well, so what we're going to do is I'm going to back up five feet I have a 40 foot movement speed and Uradel will charge um 30 feet into um just one of them uh and take a sw and I will swing at it with my whip all right that is rainbow C that's gonna be a 25 to hit that definitely hits that's gonna be um, a total of 11 slashing damage. And its speed is reduced by 10 because of my slasher feat. Excellent. Um, wait, let me get... Let me, uh, hang on. Let me double check something here. I have Savage Attacker too. I will reroll that D4 so the damage might be higher. I will cape the 11. Um, and... Then, my second attack will be from my Echo's location against, um, I guess the one that got bit, if it's close, if it's within 10 feet. Because I have a 10 uh, foot reach with my whip. Oh, yes, it is within 10 feet. Alright, so second attack from the Echo's location, that's going to be a 29 to hit. That definitely hits. And that is going to be a, another solid 11 damage. Alrighty, and then because I charged 30 feet, um, I will bonus action attack with my hooves. Oh. Against Rainbow C. Okay. And so that'll be a 25 to hit. That that hits. And this is gonna be six damage. Alright. Um then we have Onweir! Yes, Anweir is ready for her turn. <clears throat> uh, you are standing directly in front of Rainbow A. And just kind of off to your right is Rainbow B and tree number two. Yes. Uh, Anweir would like to activate Primal Savagery. All right. I slash at the one closest to me. The 15 to hit. That hits. 
as my claws tear apart, dealing 12 acid damage. Oof. And will that be the end of your turn? Then I will use my bonus action to disengage. Okay. And then can I use my movement to stealth? Uh, sure. Where do you want to... I mean, you can try. <laughs> yes, I would like to find some shrubbery or trees to hide in. Um, does that incite an attack of opportunity? Or not, with, because you're with, disengaged. With the disengage, no. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, yes, there is. there are some trees. Um, just uh, 5, 10, 15 feet to your left. All right. I would like to stealth up the trees. All right. You want to roll stealth for me? Yes, that is a 19. You stealth up those trees really, really well. Nobody noticed. And we await the rest of her turn here. Perfect. Uh, next up, we have Sportle. Sportle, you are muted. Oh, uh, well, Sportle's gonna look at one of uh, one of the rainbows. Is pretty got pretty hurt, didn't it? Yes, that would be Rainbow A. Okay. Well. Sportle's going to look at Rainbow A and be like, well, I really hate to have to do this to you, but we got to do things that need doing. And Sportle's going to walk on over to Rainbow A, take out his club, cast Shirley on it, and then whack him over the head. All right, roll to hit. That's a 22. It definitely hits. For 12 damage. All right. The, uh, how do you, how do you want to describe this rainbow's death? So, like I said, Sportle just very slowly walks over and kind of just takes about four or five seconds to raise his club up. Get his arm to a nice 90 degree bend. And then with speed you haven't seen of Sportle just goes just right down into this thing. The rainbow kind of flickers. The doom music cuts off suddenly and it vanishes. Well, I hope you all paid attention and realize that you may have youthful vigor, but experience comes with age. Is that the end of your turn? Yes, it is. All right, Roxy, you are up next. Oh, hooray. So I got to know, these, uh, these tree thingies, how far is the nearest one from me? <laughs> 15 feet. 15 feet? Okay. Um, is there one that's close to any of my allies? Like super um, super close? Yes. There is, um, there is a tree, uh, just, like, right in front of, um, Uridale. And anyone else? Mm, nope. Hmm. But there is also a living rainbow right in front of Uridale. And it, is there only one creature total that's close to me being the one tree? Yes, there is uh, 20 feet. Has, if you go 20 feet to the left, you find a rainbow. 20 feet to the right, you find a rainbow. 25 feet, you find a tree. And 30 feet straight ahead, you find another tree. Oh, goody. Now, what are these trees made out of again? Chocolate and cotton candy. <laughs> Hooray! So, I'm going to strum my lyre, and I'm going to sing Firebolt! As I cast it. Beauty. Who are you striking at? Oh, 
the Sorry? tree that's 15 feet from me. Got it. It's a 26 hit. Yes. Yes, it really does. Hooray! So it's going to take 2d10 fire damage. Total of 13. Excellent. How's the chocolate tree looking after the fire bolt? A little melty, and uh, the cotton candy is looking black, and you can smell burnt sugar in the air. That is such a gross smell, and I kind of regret it a little bit, but not really, because ew, that's way too much sugar, and that's all I can do on my turn. Beautiful. Um, so next up we have tree number two and uh, tree number two is going to lumber on over to uh, Sportal. Cool. When he gets within 10 feet, I'm going to activate my symbiotic spores or whatever. Wait, uh... What are you called, you little bit? Halo of Spores. So when anybody gets within 10 feet, they've got to make a DC 16 constitution saving throw, or they're going to take 1d6 necrotic damage. All right. This tree is going to make a constitution save. That would be a nat 1 for a total of 3. <laughs> All right. So it's going to take 2 necrotic damage. Yeah. All right, and then, and then it's and then it's uh, it's going to attack you. Well, that seems very rude. Um. So does a. I'm gonna bet a ten does not hit. That would be correct. All right. Uh, next up, we have tree number one, who is right beside Uridale. And so tree number one is going to make the same attack. Alrighty then. Does 23 hit? Yes, 23 does hit. Beautiful. I mean, what? And you are going to take... Uh, 13 bludgeoning damage. Ouch! And last but not least, we have Rainbow B. And Rainbow B uh, is making very loud doom noises at this point um, and is going to target all five of you. And so you all need to make a DC 12 dexterity saving throw. Even on we are up in the trees. Oh no, not on we're because they don't know that you're in the trees. Oh goody. So everyone but on we're needs to make a DC twelve saving throw. Uh dexterity you said? That would yes. be a natural twenty. Well done. Uh, Ember gets a Ember gets a fourteen. Nice. That's it's a three a for the echo. Okay. And a natural 20 for actual Uridel. <laughs> and Roxy, you got a 6? No, 16. Oh, 16. Okay, so the Echo is going to take... The Echo has 1 HP. It is automatically destroyed. Good. So the Echo is now dead. Oh, no. Whatever shall I do... It would have taken seven fire damage, in case you're wondering. That is good fire damage. damage. Yes. A beam of red light streaks out, smacks the echo, uh, and it vanishes. Um, and then we go back up to Ember, and it is now Ember's turn. All right, Ember, Will, um... Well, okay, so who's still right around Ember? Is it There's a tree, and then is there also still a rainbow here that attacked me before? Nope, that one is dead, but that there is dead. a rainbow ten feet from you. Sure, that's what I thought. Uh, it's okay, I will still attack the tree that is right next to me. 
Ember will uh, recover himself from his stumble and do a twirl with his long sword and make uh, make an attack, make two attacks with it actually. First is a uh, seventeen to hit. That hits. It's a two hand, it's a two hand strike. Um, that will be one d ten slashing plus two d six fire. Yeah. Sorry, say that one more time. Yeah, because it's a flame tongue longsword, it does one d ten slashing for eight. And then 2d6 fire for 3. Fire. And then he will strike again! Ah! Ugh, this one's an 11, though. That does not hit. Ah. And that will be, um... Ah! Uh, that'll be the end of his turn. Okay. Uh, next we have tree number 3. And tree number 3 is fairly far away. So it's going to move up. Excuse me. It's going to move up and it's going to shoot a bolt of light at Uridale, Ember, and Sportle. Ow. Oh dear. Well, that that doesn't seem very sporting of you. Oh, it's getting me a little steamed. That is a DC 12. Dexterity. Uh, uh, what kind Dex. of dexterity? Yes. Okay. I'm not. 26. Ready. That's a 7. I just make it. That's a 12. Oh. All right. <laughs> so, Ember, you got a 7? Uridale no. got a 7. Oh, Uridale got a 7. Ember's not capable of a 7. It is a 26. <laughs> Ember's good at one thing, and it's the dex. All right. You are going to take... So a bolt of purple light flies towards you and hits you in the chest and you take four radiant damage. Gotcha. Ouch. <clears throat> You're going to pay for that. Uh, then it is Rainbow C's turn and Rainbow C is still right in front of Uridale. So Rainbow C is going to... Ooh! And also, Ember is now in Rainbow C's range. Yep. So please make another DC 12 dexterity saving throw. All right. I succeed this time! Yay! Excellent! 23! Excellent! You both succeed. Well done. And then we move to Uridale. It is your turn. Well, these trees have roughed me up quite a bit. Um, so we are going to do a bonus action second wind. Uh, that's going to be nine points of healing as I roll a one on my d10. Because, of course. Naturally. <laughs> and then we're going to go into um, which one is looking more hurt, the tree or the, the rainbow? Definitely the rainbow. I'm going to start with my first attack against the rainbow. Question. How does a rainbow look injured? Uh, it's, it's light starts dimming. <laughs> the light starts dimming. It's not it as little, bright and flashy anymore. It gets a little pastel-y. Yeah. But that's going to be a dirty 20, um, which will be 12 points of slashing damage. And its speed is reduced by 10. Actually, every, everything I attack, the speed is reduced by 10. Um, and then, is it still alive? It is. It's looking pretty grayscale right now, though. I will attack it one more time. All right. That's a 27 to hit. That hits. Um, and we're going to go for another 12 points of slashing damage. And as you make that slashing damage, the doom music cuts out. The rainbow flashes and disappears. And I, I just crack the whip with a loud snap as it dashes through it. And then I'll turn on the um, tree and say, you're next. Excellent. Uh, Onweir, it is now your turn. Yes, Onweir would like to 
take this opportunity to move about the branches and get into a position to drop down on the target. You cannot drop down on the target, but you can drop right in front of tree number one. Yes. Okay. Could I? Unless you want to make a acrobatics check to see if you can jump that far. Okay. I can make an acrobatics check for that. And then Anwia would like to drive a dagger into this tree. All right. Acrobatics check is a 13. All right, it's a little clumsy, but you manage. You land on it. That drive my dagger in. Do I have advantage from the stealth attack? Yes, you do. All right. That'll be a 23 to hit. That definitely hits. All right. And the damage is five piercing. And for my sneak attack, five more. Excellent. Um. And then I would like to bonus action disengage. All right. Consider yourself disengaged. And that will be all for Anwia's turn. Perfect. And then we go to... Sportle! Oh, that's me. Um, the tree that my good friend Anwia just stabbed is still up, right? So Yes, it is. I'm going to head on over there again. And on my way over there... I'm going to look at my club and just put a little sumac leaf on it and rub it in there. And it's going to ignite into a flame blade. And then I'm going to attack this tree. Does a 14 hit? Yes, it does. Great. Um... That's going to be 12 fire damage. Uh, quick question. If something is vulnerable to fire, does that mean it takes double damage? Yes, it does. Then this tree just took double damage. And the other tree should have took it, taken double damage from that fireball earlier. <sighs> My bad. Mistakes happen. This is... You're doing great. But that's the tree is looking very melty and very charred. But that's my movement, bonus action, and action. So that will end my turn. Alrighty. Um then we have Roxy. Yeah, you do have Roxy. Hi, that's me. I'm Roxy. And that tree that I hit before, uh, yes. well, guess what? I'm going to do it again. I'm going to shut my little liar and sing out another uh, firebolt. Firebolt. And that's going to be 14 to hit. That hits. Oh, hooray. So it's duty 2d10. Total of 11. And you said it's double then? Yeah, because he's vulnerable to fire. Okay, so a total of 22. Uh, you have killed the awake- er, You have killed the uh, cotton candy tree. It is a puddle of charred, moldering, burnt sugar and chocolate. Hooray! I bet it looks really gross. Extremely. And how far away is the nearest tree? Is there one still alive? Uh, in fact, there are two still alive. So there is one right beside Ember, uh, which is 15 feet from you. And then there is one d- 20 feet directly in front of you. Okay, well, 
don't have any more actions, but I am going to stay here since I have more than enough range to spare with my fireball, so I can just stand here and toss them all day long. Beauty. Um, and then we have tree number two that is right beside um, Sportle. And it is going oh. to take... Well, I'm going to use my reaction to do my Halo of Spores. Because uh, when it starts okay. to turn there, it's got to make a DC 16 con save. That would, that would be the very impressive six. That's a failure. Two necrotic damage. Alrighty. Um, and then it is going to fire a bolt of light at uh, Sportle, Roxy, and Uridale. Please make a DC 12 dexterity saving throw. Oh no. That's a 10. That's a 9. Uh, is it 26 okay? You succeed. How oh, goody. Oh no. <laughs> um, so, Sportle, you are going to take 7 poison damage. As a Ow. bolt of green light streaks out and hits you in the chest. Alright, let me roll my concentration check. That's a success. So my flame blade is still active. Beauty. And then, Uridale, you take uh, nine cold damage as a blue light streaks out and hits you in the chest. That's quite chilling. Yordel's getting beat up this fight. Um, and then we have Rainbow B. And Rainbow B is no longer spouting doom sounds. It is now spouting sad, depressed sounds. And it's looking a little gray and a little more pastel. And uh, it starts to retreat. Would anyone like to make a uh, Sportle? You are right beside it. Would you like to make an attack of opportunity against Rainbow B? Unfortunately, I already used my reaction with my Halo of Spores. Is it within 10 feet of me when it starts to leave? Because I have a 10 foot reach. Hmm. No, it is not. Unfortunate. Uh... And then we come back to Ember. All right. So um, the tree that was right next to me is dead now, right? Too, right? Yes. Uh, all that's left is that rainbow that's fleeing. There's a rainbow fleeing. There is a um, damaged looking tree and there is a fully healthy tree. Okay. I will um, run over to the fully healthy tree and uh, give it what for with a long sword Two hands, chopping it like a, uh, cheese. Ten to a hit. Uh, nope, a ten does not hit. It's All right, on we are flanking this one. On we are is not flanking this one, unfortunately. All right. <laughs> All right, well, uh, here comes attack number two. Same thing, longsword, two hands. Ah, it's an eleven. An eleven does not hit. Goodness, okay. I'm doing a lot of good here. We are. Um, that's uh, that's going to be the end of my turn. <laughs> okay. Um, and then it is tree number three. And tree number three is going to shoot a bolt of light at uh, Ember and Uridale. DC 12 dex saving, dex saving throw, please. That'll be a natural one. That'll be a fail, unfortunately. Sorry, did you say Ember also? Yes, and Ember. Oh, sorry. That's fine. There we go. That's a 22. That is a save. Well One thing good. That's it. Come on. Sorry, keep hitting the wrong button. You are going to take... Ah, what did I do? Uh, so, Uridale, 
you are going to take seven acid damage as a bolt of orange light shoots out and hits you in the chest. Ooh, mm. These trees don't fight fair. That's okay, it's what I'm used to. And then it's Uridale. Now it is your turn. Is there still a tree next to me? Yes, there is. I'm going to use my bonus action to summon my echo on the opposite side of it to give myself advantage. Uh, and, and I'm going to attack it. Uh, does a 29 hit? Yes, it does. Um, for 13 points of damage. Uh, still up? Yes. Unfortunately, was- tree number three is looking pretty darn good. I will attack it again with an 18. That will hit. We're going to go for another 13 points of damage. Is it looking? Is it still looking pretty fine? Um, it, you've sheared off some of the chocolate bark and the cotton candy has been has been falling kind of haywire as you're be, as you've been hitting it. I'm going to use my unleash incarnation to do one more attack. All right. I'm just crack the whip right at it. That's going to be a 27 or a let's crit fish. Okay, 27. That will hit. And we're going to use my savage attacker to reroll that damage die for a total of 13 damage. Wow. Three number three is looking quite a bit worse for wear right now. And then as that is over, I will send my echo to chase after uh, the running rainbow. All right. And that will be the end of my turn. Okay. Um, and then we have Onweir. Yes, Onweir would like to take this opportunity to look at the tree, invoke the powers given to me by the rot, and shatter this thing. So I'm going to need a constitution saving throw on the tree which invokes a 10-foot radius sphere centered on the tree. Does an 11 save? 11 does not save. As that is going to be... 18 thunder damage. Wow. You guys really don't like this tree. I don't have any personal grudge against the tree, but... They are attacking my allies. These trees beat the crap out of me, and I'm not really looking forward to taking that lying down. Honestly, that seems like a you problem. I would like to dash forward and try to take a bite of this tree as well, as I have the Hungry Jaws ability, being a lizard folk. If it hits, I'll re- I'll gain four temporary HP. Yeah, um, I'm not flank- no, there's no other one- else, no one else flanking, right? Uh, Ember is flanking. Okay, so I have advantage. It'll be a 13 to hit. That hits. That'll be five piercing damage. And I gain four temporary HP. And... The tree kind of crumbles, all the cotton candy falls from its branches, and it collapses to the ground, dead. Well done. There is one tree left. Um, Onweir, was that the end of your turn? Yes, that is the end of Onweir's turn. Perfect. Sportle, it is your turn. There is one tree left. It is 20 feet from you. Great. Well, seeing as I have this flaming blade, I'm going to walk up to it slowly and just wrap one of my big old claws around its face and then gently shove this flame blade into its where its spine would be. That's an 18 to hit. That hits. 
cool. That's nine fire damage, which I guess gets doubled to eighteen. Yep. All right, he's he's looking angry. I've given this tree pronouns. This tree is looking angry. Uh, it's cotton candy. It has fallen onto your blade, and there is now burnt sugar on your sword. Mm. That's going to caramelize real good. Oh, wait. No, I'm not going to do that. Let me see. Do I have... Ah. Uh, no. That's going to end my turn. All right. Uh, Roxy, it is now your turn. Uh, Helps if I unmute myself, huh? It does. Tree number two is 15 feet away. And has it been melted even a slightest bit? Not even a little bit. Oh, wait, yes, it has melted a little bit because it just got stabbed by a fire sword. Well, allow me to turn up the heat some more with another firebolt. You know, I know, I'm a one-trick pony at this point, but it's quick. I don't get my fingernails dirty and it gets the job done the 15 hit 15 does hit ray here comes the fire damage oh 13 and then you double it so 26 uh it's looking very melty it's still moving but you can tell that it's not moving very well so, do y'all think if we just leave this one be, it'll continue to melt away? Or do you think it'll chase us? Really? I Maybe. doubt it'll chase us. It doesn't look very fast. The thing took a massive chunk out of me. I'm going to put it down. Oh, yes. Probably, well, probably, better, not to, probably not, better not to risk it. Also, I resent the horse pun. I'm sorry, I wasn't thinking. I'm not trying hey, to be racist, I promise. Yurdale, just remember, you've got to risk it for the sea biscuit. What's a sea biscuit? Is that it's like, like. It's like a. The, is it like a biscuit with cheese and garlic? Alright, everyone, pull the reins in. We have a battle to win here. <laughs> I don't see any rain. Is it going to rain? I don't. I didn't bring my umbrella. Uh, another horse pun. I think this tree needs to be our main focus. Oh, that kind of rain. Together. Um, I can't do anything else, so... Your turn. Alright, the it is now the tree's turn. And, uh... Ember, you are right beside it, actually. Alright. So it We're is gonna... going to attack you. Oh, have at it. Does a 21 hit? Oh, just barely. Excellent. You are going to take 16 bludgeoning damage. Yeah. And that is the end of Tree 2's turn. And it is now Ember's turn. Oh, man. That, that's really making me a little hot headed here. So I'm going to really take it out on him and get at least one good hit in in this fight. Here's a, a sword attack. It, it doesn't happen to be flanked, does it? No. No, it is not. Okay. Alright, that's 24 to hit. That hits. And then a uh, d10 plus 2d6. That's 11 slashing and 4 double to 8 fire. Um, Alright, and then... Uh, Tree, you can chunks, chunks of, uh, chunks of chocolate fly off as you hit it with a sword. It melts away there and, and it collapses in a pile of rubble ah, delicious. and burnt sugar. All right. Is, um, all that's left is the rainbow that's getting away or that's probably already, that's probably long gone, right? The, yeah, the rainbow that ran away escaped into the giant cotton candy forest. Okay, that's about it then. Yeah, All right. that is it. You have no more enemies. What Huzzah! do you guys do? Yurida will continue sending their uh, their ch- chasing after the running away ram the runaway rainbow. All right. 
until I catch up within 10 feet of it, and then I'm going to flock it. Okay. Does a 13 hit? Yes, it does. 13 damage. Alright, it is... Um... It is still going to try and escape, because it's looking very dim and very well, grayscale. I have a second attack, so... Okay. Uh, 20, dirty. That hits. Uh, we're gonna re-roll that one with Savage Attacker for 13 damage. It is... It is very dim. You can barely see the flickering light. It is making very, very, very sad noises. Okay, and then when it le- runs away, I will take the attack of opportunity. Okay. Do it. 13. That is. For, for 11. Uridel <laughs> does not like rainbows. Clearly. Her- Uridel's life was the opposite of sunshine and rainbows, and so she sort of resents this entire thing's existence. Gotcha. It flickers, sad music disappears, and it goes out. So, the five of you are in a giant meadow. Um, As I said before, there is a... You can see off in the distance to the west a very large mountain range. And you can see to the right, there is a uh, gumdrop and uh, rock candy path kind of leading around the western edge of the cotton candy forest. Um, if anyone has either some healing or perhaps we could take a, a bit of a, of a break, a short rest. Well, I don't have much, but... I can do a little bit, I guess. Here you go. You cauterize any wounds. I will cast a third level healing word. Um, you will heal for, wow, 15. Much appreciated, Master yes. Tolda. Well, remember where that came from. I will. Um, can... All of you make a perception check for me. I sure can. With advantage. Because of my Sentinel Shield, 21. Wow. 14. Wait, what are we making? Perception checks? Yes. I have advantage on those. It's going to be a dirty 20, and it's like one of the only dirty things that I like. That's a 24. It's a six for Anweer. All right, so everybody but Anweer can see clustered on the eastern edge of this cotton candy forest are several white teddy bears and some stuffed wolves. They are just kind of frolicking in the field, eating some flowers, licking these chocolate and cotton candy trees. They look very fun and playful. They have noticed you amongst, amidst all of this fighting with the trees and the rainbows, um, but they don't seem to care. What do you do? Well, if they seem to not care, then kind of trying to make our way around it. Uh, does anybody speak celestial? Nope. I do. I do not. All right, Roxy. Huh? You can understand what the bears are saying as they're talking to each other. And they're laughing and joking about your fight. And they want to know if you guys need a guide. And you hear them talking about the previous um, the previous explorers who came in to adventure. So, like, are they laughing at us? Or laughing They're definitely... With us? definitely laughing with you they it's clear they were cheering you on in the fight and they're very impressed that you managed to succeed how far away are these bears uh about 40 feet um i'm gonna call out in celestial of course oh you bears over this way i'm going to wave with my lyre at them get their attention 
sure I have it. You definitely do, and two of the bears start lumbering towards you. They look very, very soft and fluffy. Their eyes kind of look like giant buttons with white thread sewn onto them. Um, and you can kind of see on their stomachs that they have um, little buttons and a little bow tie on their neck as though they're wearing a little shirt. Adorable. So I'm going to really restrain a little squeal of excitement because I just cannot with how cute they look. But I'm, I'm going to clear my throat and ask, say, could you show us around? Do you mind? It's not too much trouble. The first, uh, the first little bear kind of giggles and she says, yeah, sure. You guys are doing a lot better than the last people who came through here. Oh, really? You're so kind. Thank you. The other bear kind of nudges the first one and says, You don't need to be so rude about the other ones. They tried. They failed. But they tried. Oh, that's okay. We already know that the last ones died, and... Probably the ones before them and the ones before them, but... And I'm going to pause and take a look at everyone else. Um, I think, I think we'll be okay, especially if you two lovely bears are kind enough to help us out. I'm sure we're going to do super. Yeah, sure. We'd love to help you out. Um, I mean, it's a pretty long way. Are you sure you can walk that far? Yeah, that's okay. I don't mind. Uh, we can we can take breaks if necessary, but I've been known to go for hours and hours and hours and hours and. We get oh, the picture. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure you do, but I was trying to be clear, okay? Crystal. You know we could we could give you a ride if you want. Yurido will look down. That won't be necessary. I, I wouldn't mind a bear ride. I would love to. You do not have to subject yourselves to this. You know that. You can be proud creatures. Great. I'd love to give you a ride. My name's Winnie, and this over here, this is my brother, Ted. Hi, Winnie. Hi, Ted. My name is Roxy. And this is uh, Sportle and... Ember and Onweir and 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 oh, I'm sorry, Miss Horse. What's your name again? Uradel. Uradel. That's right. I'm sorry. I forgot your name. Uh, and this is Uradel. Hey, Roxy. Are these bears for the eating? No, we're not going to eat them. Um, they're actually offering to help us out. They offered to give us rides since it's such a long way. Oh, okay. Then not for the eating, then. Yeah, they also don't look super edible, if I'm being Every honest. Everything's edible if you know how to cook it. Well, I'm of not sure they can be... Oh, necessarily. They, they, they said it was a long way. About how far is it? Um, that's a good question. Let me ask. And Onweir, um, remember, these bears in particular, bears are friends, not food. <clears throat> See, but polar bears are food. I get that, but, like, these bears are not polar. They're cute and adorable. And their names are Winnie and Ted, by the way. Hey, Winnie, Ted, how far away is our destination? Out of curiosity. Um, well, it takes us about... What'd you say, Winnie? Like, four? Yeah! Oh, yeah! Four hours! It takes about four hours if you want to walk there. But we could run there in about half the time. Oh, that sounds delightful. I'll let them know. Hey, so it's four hours if we walk, but they can run and it'll take about half that. 
Well, I believe the sheriff said that our portal portal was only going to be open for a few hours, so we should probably hurry. Ah, uh, you know what, Sportle? That is a good idea. Plus, no offense, as a portal, I I would kind of feel bad if you had to walk that long. Cause I know I'm kind of tired just thinking about it, but you're a little bit older than I am, plus you're a turtle, so I feel like I feel like that'd be extra hard it's, on you. It's true. I'm not a spry. As I was 250 years ago. Oh, that's okay. But I still try. And that's the important part. You are absolutely correct, Sportle. But I was just thinking 250 years ago, um, I was uh, very much just getting my head, 250 head. years ago. 250 years ago, that was. My prime. I was about 160, and boy, was I fit. They believe it. Say, we should swap tori stories about centuries past after we're done with this. But so, to get back on track, we're going to take the bears, yeah? I agree. So, I will run alongside. Spend some. Um... Can't really do that writing thing. Yes, of course, but are you going to be okay, Uradale? I can I can last much longer on my feet, I okay. promise. Good. Just make sure you stretch beforehand, and you've got some water with you, yeah? Yes, I keep a water skin. I'll be okay. Good, because you got to stay hydrated, especially if you're going to run for that long. Yes, now we should uh, re trot along before we run out of time. Yes, yes, let's go, let's go. Thank you, Onweir. So you're all gonna jump on the... Jump on the bears? Yeah. Uh -huh, to each. I can't really jump, so I'm going to... slowly climb. Ted's gonna kind of crouch down so that you don't have to climb so high. Oh, thank you. Hey, Roxy, uh, what's this one's name? Uh, that one is Ted. Thank you, Ted. I appreciate your assistance. Uh, Ted, Sportle says thank you, and he appreciates your assistance. Well, we animals, we gotta look out for each other. Nothing like... Nothing like scary humans coming in, shooting us up, stealing our innards, and stealing it away. God. Yeah, that sounds horrible. We gotta put a stop to that. And did you say humans? Because, um, ew. No, thank you. Ooh. They ruined literally everything. Humans turned my nephew into soup and designer purses. Oh no, that's horrible! But were the designer purses uh, uh, good? I'm sorry, they I were ask. Very chic for about two seasons. Well, that is disgusting and awful. Well, in their defense, my sister, his mom, did get a free bag. That's horrific. That doesn't seem like a war. Yeah, no, that makes it worse. Hey. We thought it was a kind gesture. Um, actually, it was a really rude one. And to tell you what, when we're done here, we should go track down those bastards and give them the old one, too, just like we did with those trees oh, and rainbows. And get all the pieces. That was 300 of years ago. Oh. They're dead. Oh. Let's meet up their great great grandkids or whatever too, and tell them that their ancestors were garbage, and then track down all of the bags and stuff. Whoa. And if I remember, a nice place for your home. Walk and talk, Roxy. Walk yes. and talk. If I yes, remember, their last name was 
Jefferson or something like that. Jefferson? That's such a gross name. They, they lived in Douglas. Oh, Douglas? I have a friend in Douglas. We totally met at a brothel. So I'll have to hit him up when we get back and see if they know these Jeffersons. Okay. So as the bears are running along, um, does anyone want to use the time to take advantage of a short rest or anything? Yes, uh, yes I, I will. I, I, yes. Would, I, I would like to take the time to pull from my satchel and make a special treat for everyone. And is, for Ur- is Uradel able to short rest even though she has to run alongside? Hmm... I don't think so. Yeah, that's what I figured. It's okay, the fighter only gets everything back on a short rest. I'm sorry. So, so, like, as we're traveling, I'm just going to be strumming my lyre and humming and thinking about composing something that memorializes our journey, but for some reason I'm in a bit of a funk and I only have a couple of bars. I'm going to work on it while we're traveling. Well, as I see this, I'm going to pull out my bagpipes. Hey, Roxy. How do you fancy a duet? A duet? Sportle, that sounds lovely. But to be honest, I don't think I've got this skill to keep up with your bagpipes yet. You see got a little rusty when I started fighting. Uh, so I'm just getting well, back in the swing of things. If I'm being honest, the bagpipes are a little difficult seeing as I don't really have fingers to plug the holes. I just kind of move my claw over them oh, and pray. Well, that's okay. I'm sure it'll sound great, and we can just struggle together. It'll be fun. Um, and with that, so. uh, with that, we're going to fast forward a couple hours, and you show up at what looks like an abandoned campsite. Um, you can tell that Winnie and Ted are very obviously nervous. Um, to to go any further um, and they just kind of stop right at the edge of the cotton candy forest through the trees you can see a tent, the smoldering remains of a fire um, and um, and that's about it um, well, what yeah. do you do? here yeah, friends I made you special stish kebabs on the way here yeah. roasted squirrel and dragon tooth pepper. Mm-hmm. Well, hopefully this will have some flavor to it. I lost most of my taste buds in a horrible rockfish accident 72 years ago. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little curious about where you got the squirrel and how you cooked it on the back of a bear, but I'm not going to ask too many questions. I will gladly Eat take it. What is the um, uh, for for those you know uh, at the at the end? So you can um, you, whoever eats the food can spend one or more hit dice to regain hit points equal and uh, equal to an extra one d eight hit points. Oh, do you so have just, to take a, do you have to take a long rest to do it? Nope, it's, it's part of the short rest that we did. Okay, we so did I just, just get, I just get extra take, hit points. Yeah, one d eight. Well, so I you have to take a short. Rest. You have to take a short rest to do it though. No, that was a short rest for me to cook it. Okay, so I will eat it. I will do that. I will eat it because I had to run alongside y'all because I have four legs and can't ride on a bear. I mean, I, I think you up. technically can still ride a bear. It's just weird. Awkward. I mean, there was two awkward. bears and five of us. Oh, it's definitely hella spicy. <laughs> oh, man. It's good to finally have some feeling in my tongue. It's really delicious, is it not? Well, 
I don't know about that, but it is food. Allow me to scout out this campsite with my phantom self, and I will use the Echo Avatar to uh, in, to, to scope out the campsite as, before we approach. Yuri? Sorry, can I call you Yuri? Because that sounds like a cute nickname, and I feel like it fits you. Is that okay? It's Yuridel. Okay, fine. Yuridel, I think that's a brilliant idea. Just be careful. Um... Bertle, I'm sorry to hear about your taste buds. That sounds really awful. And, uh, Anwir, this kebab mm. is delicious. It's hella spicy, which I love, but I'm just not used to it. So, thank you. Of course. Here, have some goat milk. It'll wash it down. Oh, hooray. Thank you. You're just so kind. Of course, of course. It's definitely helpful to treat things nicely before the end. That well, was... Um, that, that was ominous. Rather yeah, that, ominous. I mean, you're not wrong, but... Whoa. I don't know, yeah. y'all. I think it was kind of cute. Onward, some advice. You really need to learn... to read the room. There are no words to read. It's a metaphor. What's a metaphor? I don't know. What's a metaphor for you? <laughs> uh, that's a 13 for stealth for the echo. And this is why we can't have nice things. Um, okay, Yuridel, your echo stealths into the campsite. And I would like to look around. There is nobody here. It is completely abandoned. Uh, I will say the coast is clear, and I will shift, switch places with my avatar for 15 feet of movement. So if the coast is clear, uh, Winnie, Ted, why are y'all so nervous? What's wrong? Hey, the... Well, you see... This is where they were keeping the unicorns before they slaughtered them. <gasps> they did what? Oh no! Yeah. Looks like they've moved on though. Don't know where. Don't know uh, when. And we would like to... Investigate and try yeah. to find the taste of the unicorn blood. Oh. I was just gonna ask if I can roll a survival for... You know, tracks, Track. but yes, taste yes. for blood would work too. Yes, you could you I'm could go through those things. I'm okay. really familiar with the taste of unicorn blood. All right, Uriel survival for twenty-two to find tracks. Survival for nineteen. You find many tracks. There are, in fact, footprints all over this campsite. Uh, most specifically, you find tracks heading northeast towards what looks like a small mountain range. Before for unicorn blood tasting. Um, you notice behind the tent, you find the slaughtered remains of several unicorns. Their I horns would. have been removed, their manes have been shaved, and it looks as though their blood has been drained. I will... Before alerting anybody else, I will, you know, make a couple of cuts. Get some salt out, wrap it up, stuff it in my bag, and then, hey, everyone, I found the remains of some unicorns. You're oh, that it, could it, be quite useful. That's so horrible. <laughs> How is it useful? Well, well, depends on who you ask. The horns are at aphrodisiac, the... Main makes for warm for barbaric. That's awful. Yes. We should find these people and just chop their heads off. We can oh. tell. We can tell now from here that whoever decided to kill these unicorns was intelligent and motivated by money or magic, as that was was the purpose of collecting them. 
Oh. Is we, we sort of already knew that useful. since they were selling the parts in town. Yes, but the fact that they knew all the different pieces to take. Yes, it doesn't look like they missed really anything. Well, I will strangle them with my whip when the time comes. And For he, now, we should head head northeast. And you know what we, you know what they're not going to miss though. These hands. Yeah, and my fucking long sword yeah. when I swing for their faces because they sound like yeah. absolutely horrible people, and then we're gonna help them find their way to a grave. I like you, Roxy. Yeah, I can yeah. help with that. Yeah, but I, I never really, I never saw many of the unicorns where I grew up. But uh, treating any any beast like this is is uh not okay. Unicorns are beings of a celestial nature. They are not mere beasts. Well, that's true. Yeah, uh, not it's not. Sl- correct, slaughtering correct, such a folks. creature can often bring great woe upon the individual who acts as such, and it appears that it is our duty to enact this divine justice. It will be my pleasure. Mine too. I agree more. And also, Anwir, when we find the people responsible, you can eat as much as you want. I've been looking for a reason to make a long pork chili. Oh, that sounds delicious. That sounds quite disturbing. Why, why does it matter how long the pig is? Who are we to judge? Long pork ember is what we re- they refer to cannibalism as. Yeah, oh, I don't eat other lizard folk. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Fair enough. Humans eating other humans. It's it's human meat. Oh. Uh, come, let Very us well. head on. I will track this scent of unicorn. All right. So you head northeast. And as you make your way through the mountains, you can hear Mountain Charlie. <laughs> Candy Mountain. Um, um I say mountains, they're really just very tall hills. Um and as you make your way through, the farther you get, the farther northeast you go, the you can suddenly hear um, the sounds of many men fighting. It is very loud, and it is very hard to miss. Well, that is a familiar sound. Every day for 20 years. Um, right, now, well. who, who can make the most out of an initial attack? I have an idea. Sure, um, yeah, we should probably try to... They seem a little occupied. We may be able to get the jump on them. Yes, yes. Say, Amber, come here. Just a moment. Oh. Yeah, yeah, sure, no problem. And I'm going to cast Invisibility on Ember. Hey! Oh, yeah. Whoa. Usually I give off a little hey. bit of light, but this is weird. Here you go, Ember. Make the most out of it. Oh, believe me, I will. And Ember will uh, trot off to get a, look, a closer look. Um... I'm going to maintain concentration so Ember stays invisible. Solid. Um, so as you round the last curve um, in on your path around these hills, you can see another fairly large meadow. There is a group of four men standing in the middle of it. And there is a cage in the middle holding one adult unicorn and three adolescent unicorns. Uh, They're all towering. Um, And the largest burly man appears to be threatening the adult unicorn. Hmm. All right, well... um. Oh, okay, so the the sounds of conflict weren't like physical conflict; they were just yelling. Yeah, they were all yelling at the unicorns and uh, gotcha. 
scaring the crap out of them. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Um, this cage, uh, what's it made of? It is made of steel. Steel. Mm. Very obviously right. not of this, not of this mm. island. I see. All right. Well, um, I would like to to sneak ahead and, um, when, when I'm, I'd like to get right up on this group of people, and then as soon as my my companions are close, but not, you know, close uh, enough to where I think they could get in and help. I don't want to be stranded over here. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to run this guy through. The one that's arguing with the unicorns. I would Uradel is preparing to uh, full gallop charge the this individual and beat the shit out of him with her hooves while strangling him with a whip. Ooh, that sounds quite fun. Not for him it won't be. Well All right. it might be. Last the bliss before his death. Um, do I need to make a, a stealth check or anything along those lines? Um, I don't think so. You're invisible, and, uh... Good deal. Uh, yeah, so you've got you've got advantage here. I'll give you advantage there. Great. All right. And, uh, yeah, so let's get an advantage attack. Aha! Roll. Good deal. That is, a, that is a 25 to hit. Uh, that hits... Uh, good. <laughs> I would hope so. Um, D10 plus two D6s, 13 slashing, and eight um, uh, fire. And then I'm also going to use a key point for... Where is it? It is... Uh, oh, features... Uh, Ending strike? Uh, that was actually what I was looking for. Yep. Um, I believe it's a sunning, con save. Yep, Sunning Strike is a con save. Alright. 11? That'll fail. He is stunned until the end of my next turn. Alright. Uh, and then I'm going to make a uh, an unarmed strike, so I run him through with the longsword, then I'm going to raise up my foot and try to kick him off the blade. Um, unarmed strike. Uh, ba 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 See, that is a, a 16 to hit. That hits. All right. Um, that is just four to one. Uh, so six damage bludgeoning. Um, and because I used an unarmed strike, I now have a plus two to my AC until the end of my next turn. Um, and then I'm going to uh, might as well flurry of blows this guy. Because I'm a monk and that's what I do. Which means two more unarmed attacks. Oh, they both have advantage because of him being stunned. That's a dirty 20. Yeah, it's 26 to hit for the first one. That hits. And, then, uh, and that one is nine bludgeoning. And then the last one is... I hope good thing for advantage. Uh, a 23 to hit for... That hits. Another ten bludgeoning, and that'll be the end of my turn. All right, um, then we are going to roll for initiative. Yeah. All right, and that's what I built my guy to do. Thanks for the. That's thanks a for being three. The... That's a twenty-two uh, for Anwir. I'm going last. Twelve for Yurido. Uh, that that's an eight for Ember. Um, I guess I just did all I needed to do just now. So that's going to be a nine for me. Um, while I'm okay with hanging back, I do kind of want to see some action a little bit sooner. So yeah, let's go. Um, sorry, what did you, Uradale, what did you get? Well, Beautiful. Okay. Um, so the, <laughs> the guy in the middle, the big bad evil guy, um, he's stunned and kind of looking around trying to see what the hell is going on. Um, you see the two 
The other two that were flanking the cage, they start, they pull out their swords and they start looking around for whoever was, uh, whoever was attacking. And two more bandits oh, burst yeah. out of the tent. And because I attacked, I am now visible, correct? Or are you still invisible because it's Onweir who cast the spell? No, it's uh, whenever you it attack. It breaks it. Oh, okay. Okay, no worries then. Yes, you are you are visible and they see you and they're pissed. Hey. Um so Onweir, you are up first. Yes, yes. Onweir would like to take this opportunity to get at a point where I can see the majority of these uh smooth skins. Can I see one close by that is not in current combat? Mm, yes, but he is currently 40 feet away from you. Okay. I would like to take the opportunity to get 10 feet closer. Deal. And then I will cast infestation and when I cast infestation I just pull a small bit of the uh, meats that haven't gotten used up yet and just chuck it that's all the spell is there's no magic okay uh, that's a constitution saving throw all right for um, for just one target or yes just the one target Alrighty. Um, that would be a six. That is a fail, as it takes nine, nine damage. Um, that's going to be poison damage, as the infestation cloud kind of moves towards the south as the, 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 the target also moves five feet to the south with the cloud. All right. And that will be the end of Anuia's turn. All right, now it's uh, Reginald Tollfield, or Tollfree, sorry, is the, is the guy in charge, and it's Reginald's turn now. Um, but he is stunned, so I don't think he can do anything. Correct. Is that correct? Yep, that's that's it. Cool. So then we move on to Uradale. Far away am I from Reginald? Uh, you are 40 feet from Reginald. I have 40 feet of movement speed. How convenient. Um, so we're gonna do a full-on charge. Um, and well, he's stunned, so I have advantage. Uh, so Uradale's gonna run up. And we're gonna. Does he have? Is he holding a weapon at the moment? Uh, no, his weapon is still sheathed. Understood. Yurido will charge at him and make two attacks with our whip. Uh, with that advantage. So first one is gonna be a seventeen to hit. That hits. Second one is a thirteen to hit or twenty-three to hit. That hits. Yep, okay. Um, 13 damage for the first hit. Uh, 13 damage for the second hit. I will also have caused my um, Echo to move up as with me as well. And will manifest a a Incarnation for another attack. Okay. And 26 or... 26, so 26 to hit on that one. That hits. That is going to be 12 damage. Uh, bonus action, hoof attack for my charging ability. This stun is so useful because um, I did that one twice <laughs> during this whole thing, but the stun saved my life. Uh, the last attack is going to be a 24 to hit. Mm -hmm. um, so that is 8 points of bludgeoning damage. And since he's stunned, and I might as well make the most of it, we're going to go ahead and action surge. Um, and 
And that's going to be two more attacks with advantage. For a 28 and a 22 to hit. Yep. <laughs> uh, 12 damage and 12 damage. Is it still up? Yes, he is still up. But I will go barely. ahead and I will go ahead and manifest Echo again because Uridel absolutely despises this man's existence, and because I can do that. One last attack at advantage. Oh, I love this so much. Um, that is a twenty-five to hit. Uh huh. And we're gonna go ahead and re-roll that one with Savage Attacker for the damage, so it's going to end up being uh, 11 damage on the last hit. And how do you want to do this? Well, as I said before the fight, um, I charge up to him and there is a slurry of one, two, three, four, five. There's six whips, two of which come from my Echo and the other four come from me. Um, and ultimately... I run at him, trample him onto the ground, flog him six times, and finish off with a with a just the Russian garrot to the throat with my whip. And in a puddle of blood and whip lashes, he collapses to the ground beside the cage. Um, and that is my turn. And with that, we go to Roxy. Um. Big bad evil guy is now dead. Oh, Reginald right. Tolfi Tolfrey. Uh, however, there are still three bandits and two mercenaries. And who's the closest? Uh, one of the mercenaries would be the closest to you. Uh, just a sec, okay. At about... Yep, at about 20 feet. Uh... So, I may not have thought things through. Uh, that's totally okay. Um, the one that's closest to me, I'm gonna cast, uh, on. I'm gonna blind him. And I'm gonna do it at the third level. Okay. Uh, it's gonna be a constitution saving throw. And... They need to be at least out of 15. Uh, that's not gonna do it. He got a nat 1. For a total of 3. <laughs> okay, so... I'm gonna be blind for about a minute or so. JK, uh... Oh, yep. And because I didn't read this all the way, I can actually target an additional creature. I cast it at the third level. So the next closest after that is also going to be blinded for the next minute. Uh, if they fail, save as well. Oh. All right. That'll be a 19. Oh, okay. Well, that one's not blind. And is that the end of your turn? Um, maybe. Hold on. Um, for my bonus action, I am going to cast uh, Bardic Inspiration. Um, who's next on our team? Initiative? Ember. Ember? Okay, uh, Ember, I'm going to go ahead and give you a Bardic Inspiration. Oh, awesome. Huh? Oh, I said awesome. Thank you. Welcome. I'm just going to strum my little lyre and sing, you can do it, as I cast the Bardic Inspiration. Just give me an extra 1d8 for you for ability check, attack roll, or Great. saving throw. All right, let's sizzle. And that's it for me. All right, Ember, you're up. All right, I will. Um, are there any enemies immediately around me? Uh, no, you are. Hold on. You are 20 feet away from the nearest mercenary. That's no problem. Uh, stupid monk speed. Um, I will uh, make my first attack with my longsword to just hit the lock on this uh, on this cage. Let's see. Uh, it's a it's a twenty three to hit a lock. Uh, yeah, it breaks wide open. Okay, great. Here you go, and I'll just throw the door open, and then uh, just 
make a beeline towards the the closest guy to me. And uh, that would um, be mercenary number one. Mercenary number one, and then I'm just gonna make a, a a leaping, just double jump kick to the to this guy. Uh, make an unarmed strike. Um, nineteen to hit. That hits. All right. Of course, just seven damage. Um, but then I'm going to uh, guess what? Use that stunning strike. So I need a, con- a concentration save. Or, I'm sorry, a constitution save. Nineteen. Ah, that'll pass. Um, and then I'm gonna flurry of blows again. And so we're going to uh, hit him with another couple unarmed strikes. Oh, that's a nat one. So awesome. He is uh, blinded. Oh, cool. So, so I that, think you get advantage. Yes, advantage on both of these attacks. But let's see. All right, so the first flurry hits for 25. Yes, it does. Then, so that's a bludgeon. Um, all right. And then uh, I will hit again. 12? Oh, wait, sorry, advantage. Oh, that's better. 25. Yep. We'll hit. For another seven. Nice and neat. Just come flying in feet first to to hit this guy. Well, he's very confused and he's feeling some pain. But he's still up. Alright, that'll be the end of my turn. Okay. Uh then we have the bandits. There are three of them. And uh Bandit B on his turn drops to his knees and surrenders and that is his entire action next we have bandit A and on his turn he drops to his knees and surrenders um and then bandit A decides that uh he's gonna try and take all the loot for himself so he's going to attack and he is going to attack Uridale. Bring it on. Well, let's see. Oh, geez. Clearly he's not very good at it because he got a nine. Miss. Yeah. I did just eviscerate his boss. It's true. He's probably shaking in his boots. Um, but he wants the money. He's being greedy. Fine. And that is the end of his turn. So, Sportle, you are next. Oh, lovely. Um, are these bandits kind of clustered together, or is the one bandit separated? Um, the steal. one is kind of separated. The two who surrendered just dropped to their knees right in front of the tent. Um, and uh, about the other how one far is... is he separated? Is he like... uh, about 10 feet. Okay, so they're within 20 feet of each other? Yes. Um, okay. Well, uh, Anwir, do you prefer your dinner grilled or raw? Hmm. Chef's choice, it would seem. Let's go with grilled. And I'm going to cast in a 20-foot cube uh, erupting earth at fourth level. And that is a DC 16 dexterity save. For all three of them, right? Yeah, it's a 20 foot cube. Does that hit Uridel as well? I'm going to try to craft it so it doesn't, but if it does, yeah. it does. Same with Ember, yeah. I'm assuming Ember's resistant to fire. Oh, yes. Resistant, yes. Oh, oh I'm this... Earth. Never mind, this is bludgeoning. Oh, well. Yeah, yeah that's fine. I'll make it work. Dex save. You'll survive. Um, yeah, DM, is it hitting my allies as well, I'm assuming? Uh, yes, it is hitting Uridale and Ember. All right. Well, sacrifices must be made. That's a 10. That's a fail. That's 26. That's a save. The one thing I've consistently gonna, done well. I mean, uh, and I don't even think you're going to take half damage. You get, you get evasion, right? Uh, oh, I do have evasion. That's right. Yeah, it's a, evasion. It's a, it's a deck safe, so you take no damage. Yeah. 
Your Adele um, does take all the damage. Yeah. What about the bandit? Bandit, bandit A got a three. Bandit B got a fourteen. And fail. Bandit C got a seven. Fail. All three fail. All right. Oh wait, hang on. Never mind. I gotta roll for <laughs> the, the echo. Nope, that's even worse. Okay, yes, both me and the echo <laughs> fail. That is thirty-six bludgeoning damage. As just the earth rips open and a fountain of churned earth and stone in a 20-foot cube just erupt and pummel everybody. I remember the healing, but I'm going to remember that one, too. Give it and take it away. You have slaughtered all three <laughs> bandits. Whoa. <laughs> well, how are sometimes you got to break an egg to make an omelet. How are the unicorns looking? Did they get hit with this? Oh shit, yes they did. Oh, oh if the shit. wait, hold on. If the uni- I thought the unicorns were somewhere else. Can I can I put can I pull since it's a 20 foot cube, can I pull the cube further like towards us so that way the back of it is just hitting the bandits? Mm. Even if it has to hit more allies? I- I'm okay with taking damage if the unicorns take no damage. Yeah. Um if you Oh, wow. It was a 20-foot cube, right? Yes. Okay, my clearly just... I don't know how to read my own map. Because you can set this so that you don't take any friendly fire. Oh, really? Amazing. I just don't know Um, how to read my own map. It's fine. Okay, cool. So Yuridel doesn't take damage. Good, because that was half of my remaining HP. (laughs) You would have been fine. I would have healed would, you. Would. It's okay. I would have been fine, but it still hurt. Well, there we go. Because I like doing stupid monk shit, I, I'm, I'm totally fine getting... I, I like to act. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, hit, leave, like, yeah I'm leaving Ember. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I can jump okay. around and not get hit. Yeah. I'm assuming you're just... like Because it's like it churns earth and like, spits rocks. I'm assuming you're just like right. anime dashing like from stone yep. to stone. <laughs> Bouncing yeah. from one to the other. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> leave, leave, leave little plumes of smoke wherever I jump from. Yeah. Beautiful. Well done. Um, and is that the end of your turn? Are there any more enemies nearby? Uh, there are, in fact, two uh, mercenaries. One who is looking very pissed off and wants to attack you. Um, and the other one is blinded. Cool. So what I'm going to do as my bonus action is I'm going to awaken the symbiotic entity on my back. So my uh, my mushroom starts to glow and you see kind of a, uh, a bunch of like neon green spores rise up from the ground and surround me in a 10 foot sphere and then they kind of also form a shield, and I get 32 temporary hit points. Wow. Whoa. Yeah. It's four for each druid level. And um, then the one guy that can still see, the one that was looking angry at me, I'm just going to walk right up next to him and end my turn. Okay. And then we have Mercenary A. And Mercenary A um, is going to attack. No, Mercenary A is blinded. Can a blinded person still attack? With disadvantage. Sweet. Yep, with disadvantage. He's going to swing wildly in Ember's vague direction. Let's see what happens. Um, does a 18 hit? It does not. Wow. All right. My AC right now is sitting at 22. Oh, nice. Um, And that is going to be the end of Veteran A's turn as he misses and clangs his sword against the now empty cage. And then we have Veteran B and... Or, sorry, Mercenary B. And Mercenary B can see and is pissed off and is going to strike out at Sportle. Well, I'm going to use my reaction from my Halo Of course you are. 
And he needs to make a DC 16 constitution saving throw. That would be a nat 20 for a 22. Oh, uh, well then he takes no damage. And then he is going to try and stab you with his longsword. Well, that's not very nice. Except that he only got an 11. Halfway there. He tried. He tried poorly. He did. And we are back up to Onweir. Yes, Onweir would like to see how everyone's feeling. Is there anyone that looks particularly hurt? Um, Veteran A is looking pretty worst for wear. Good, good. Um, I would like to... Could I... Is he close enough that I could reach him within 30 feet of movement? Yes, absolutely. You can reach Uh, him in 15 feet. All right. I would like to dash and all the way to him and activate primal savagery once again and that'll be a dirty 20. that'll hit as i rend across his belly with my claws it'll be 14 acid damage he is not looking pleased as my bonus action i would like to disengage and stealth away. Um, there are no trees for you to hide in nearby. I would like so you know. to. I would like to hide behind the one I just cut. All right. Directly behind, like just hiding right behind him, moving every time he moves. The blind guy. You're just. You're just. <laughs> yes, that's a sure. twenty. <laughs> This is this is bullying. <laughs> this isn't even Sportle talking anymore. This is just me. This is just bullying this poor guy. By definition, really. Who's whose turn is it? Uh it is now uh Uridale's turn. Alright, who is who is looking the most healthy out of the out of the folks that, that are around? Uh, well there's only mercenary A and mercenary B left. Um, Mercenary A is blinded and looks like he wished he could have stayed home today. And Mercenary B is looking perfectly healthy and pissed off. Alright, I'm gonna run up to Mercenary B. Okay. And I'm going to attack Mercenary B. I will also move my um, Echo with me to, uh, to flank with me. Does a twenty eight um, you don't even need your echo. You've got um Onweir is flanking for you. Perfect. Does a twenty eight hit? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna use my martial adept feet to use a disarming strike. And um he has to make a DC sixteen um strength saving throw. Uh, that is going to be an eleven. So, um, what is he holding? He's holding a longsword. So I, uh, Uridel charges up and whips her whip around the longsword and rips it out of his hand and just sends it flying behind her. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> and in addition, I'm going to deal 11 plus 1d6 for my martial die. Uh, it's a 6, so 17 points of damage. And then I'll do my second attack. That's a natural 20. Ooh, take double damage. Alrighty. We're going to re-roll that, that die because it was a 1 and I have Savage Attacker. So that's going to be 6 plus 9, so 15 points of slashing damage. And in addition, because of my slasher feat, uh, I grievously wound him and he has disadvantage on all attack rolls. Good. But I'm going to use my last use of Unleashed Incarnation to um, do one more attack. Now, 14 or... Because I have a bit... 25 to hit. Yep. And that's going to be 10 damage. All right. He's looking... He is now looking just as shitty as Mercenary A. Only he's not blinded. All right. That's my turn. All right. 
And now we're at to ro- uh, down to Roxy. Oh, hooray! Okay, so... Hmm, you know what? A mercenary A, man, you can't see me. Since you can hear me, guess what? Um... Say hello to my friend, uh, Vicious Mockery. And with that, I'm gonna do a little... A little uh, riff on my lyre. I'm gonna be like... Guess what? Um, you're ugly. Um, your mom probably hates you, and you honestly smell like a turd. Um, now go ahead and make a wisdom saving throw. Uh, try for at least a fifteen. That's gonna be a nineteen. Well, shit. Um. Okay. Uh, hang on. Yeah, okay. Well, I guess I'll try harder next time. Um, it's gonna be it, honestly. Alright. Uh, then it's Ember's turn. Alright, so, uh, guy's still up in front. Oh, wait, no, no, that's that was a bandit. Um, yeah, I'll just run up to the nearest target and, um, do what monks do, and that's hit things. Huh. That would be a blinded mercenary. Oh, blinded. I get advantage. Ah, so it's a 22 to hit. That hits. Ah, it's a d10 plus 2d6. Ooh, that's gonna hurt. That is, uh... 15 slashing and 4 fire damage. He is very dead. Alright, yeah, just a big arcing swing, like, like, like I do a big circle spin and cut him across the, across the midsection. All right, and then how close am I to the the ne- the other mercenary? You are five feet away. Oh, oh, within striking distance. Great. Then I will get a uh, another attack in. This one's not blinded, correct? No. All right. <laughs> no. Um, one d ten. I assume the twenty six hits. Yes. Uh, that is um. Eight slashing and another five fire damage. He is barely standing. Oh, cool. Then I will um, flurry of blows to um, unarmed strike him. Just a a, 13 to hit? No, a 13 does not hit. I'll get one more. Uh, 16 to hit. Nope, 16 does not hit. Oh, weak. Okay, well, well, that's the end of my turn then. All right, he is begging for mercy at this point. <laughs> uh, <Finish> Squirtle, <laughs> it is your turn. And is it just the one guy left, or is that? Yeah, it is just Mercenary B. He is oh, looking God, absolutely ravaged, oh. and he I is I begging for mercy. Perfect. Well, what I am going to do is... Uh, mm, yes. Um, no, no, we're not going to do that. Instead, we are just going to walk up to him. So, um... Do you have any last words? Please, please don't hurt me. Flame blade right through his mouth. (laughs) Fourth level flame blade. (laughs) I just wanted him to speak so he could open his mouth. For an 18. That hits. 13 damage. He is dead. Yeah, I just, as he whimpers his last words, my... My club just ignites, and I just shove it into his mouth, and then just raise it up and just split his skull. And he collapses in a puddle of brain matter and Uh, blood. I hope we learned a lesson about respecting nature today. Your Adele would like to go over and rip open the cage. All right, go ahead. The The lock has been broken. The unicorns are still inside. 
I, I, I would like to rip the door off its hinges. All right, solid. That's a 26 athletics check. Yeah, you, you definitely succeed on that one. I apologize for your cruel treatment. We have ensured that those Actually, individuals will never treat anyone like that ever again. Um, would you like a little bit of personal vengeance? I, I say to the unicorns. Um, they're... What, what language are you speaking? Um, you know what? Let's go with Sylvan. They understand you. The, um, the adult unicorn nods a little bit and says, We appreciate your assistance. Well, Free me and my children. Here, I've got a little special surprise for you. And I'm going to use my fungal infestation on the man that I just murdered. Mm -hmm. And what that does is if a beast or humanoid that is small or medium dies within 10 feet of you, I can use my reaction to animate it as a zombie with one hit point. Funny. So I just resurrect this guy and I let the unicorn just impale him. Yeah, unicorn's going to uh, attack with his horn. No. <sighs> Anui is over skinning creatures right now. Yes. Oh, well, um... The oh. unicorn kind of shakes off his head, shaking off any blood and, and awful that's gotten on him, any brain matter, oh. that sort of thing. Awful indeed. Um, <laughs> two of the adolescent unicorns in the cage kind of scamper off into a nearby cotton candy forest. And, uh... The one adolescent unicorn that's left is looking very, very curious and is kind of scampering around, sniffing everything and poking with his horn and and kind of just investigating absolutely everything. Are you okay, young one? Oh yeah, I'm great. I just... This is all so new to me. I thought I was going to die and now I'm free and I just thought... Well, maybe now's a good time to explore. My dad said I could, if you would let me. Well, you should probably get back to your father for now. And then, once you're safe again, explore just a little bit at a time. No, but listen, I could come with you. You guys are adventurers, right? I could come with you. And I and I could be part of your team, and I could I could I could stab things with my horn if you want. Anduir likes this idea. I I will. Yurida will turn to the the parent unicorn, and also who also and I Yurida also speaks Sylvan, and says, "Is this fall of yours truly ready for adventure?" Oh. He's been dying to get off this island since the day he was born. I've been hoping that someday there might be someone to look after him on his adventures. Could perhaps one of you care for him? You have my solemn promise. Ember, Ember who also speaks Sylvan. Yeah, so um, it's weird we all speak this super uncommon language but yeah I, I'm happy to look out for them as well I'm a fake creature so it's sort of my first language actually I uh, will sure to treat them tenderly we'll oh, be mean? sure to keep that one away yeah oh, do worries. you mean it I can come with you yes young one what is your name oh why uh, you you can laugh, okay? I don't make any promises. I mean, I'm a little char I'm a little charcoal man named Ember, so I'm not gonna probably have any room to talk. My my name's Moonbeam. Oh, Moonbeam! All right, well, Moonbeam. That's a lovely name. Thanks. Yep. I and and the. The adult unicorn kind of shakes out his mane and gets everyone's attention, and he says, 
I will... I will take you back to the portal. And then I will close it until such a time as young Moonbeam chooses to open it and return again. Well, that would be much appreciated. And one last thing. And he, he wanders over behind the tent and he scoops up a bag that kind of... When he picks it up, it sounds like glass kind of tinkling together. As though there's a bunch of vases rattling around inside. And he hands them to you. He, or he puts them down in front of the party. And these are the horns of my fallen brethren. Each one will grant you one wish. There is one for each of you, if you would like. We have no more use for them here. Oh, wow. That is a great honor. Thank you. Oh, yeah. yes. Humbly accept. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Onwear has ideas. Onwear, um, you only get one. And if I remember, you can't wish for more wishes. Oh, yes, 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 that makes sense, that makes sense. But I think you can wish for a genie that would then grant three wishes, so maybe there are loopholes. Oh, yes, yes, that makes sense. Yurida will take the horn and attach it to her helm where the, the center horn is missing. Oh, wow, oh. that looks real good there. Thank you, young Moonbeam. I am. Um, I, 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 I've got, I've got thoughts on this, but I'm gonna save it for later. I've got Aina. something to think about. Admis, Nikita, Aylin, dinner's ready. What? What? Right, right now? We we're just, uh, we were still playing. But yeah. Well. I mean, if you don't come soon, then the chicken's gonna get cold. Uh, all right, let's go. Yeah, all right. Okay, I guess it's time to eat. And that's where we're going to end tonight's session.